May 26, 2012. For some, this date marks the beginning of the end. Something is on the horizon. Something is building up. The zombie preppers are predicting the collapse of the world as we know it. The zombie apocalypse will happen. Preparation for the worse is needed. A nightmare staggering out of fiction and into a frightening new reality. That's the stumbling, ravenously hungry corpse. Their only goal is to eat you. He didn't stop until he was shot in the head. Scientists have started to believe the unbelievable. It's almost certainly going to be very, very rapid. In seven days, everybody will be dead or a zombie. The preppers are ready. I would not think twice about shooting the infected dead. Even my daughter knows that we only shoot zombies in the head. Are you? For the zombie apocalypse. Most of the world thinks a zombie apocalypse is pure fantasy. It's time to meet the people who believe it will soon be a reality. The zombie preppers. Are you sure every shot counts? Some people sit around and think about what would I do if I win $10 million. I sit around and think what would I do if the zombies came. One, two, three. A zombie apocalypse happening is not a question of if, it's a question of when. This is the beginning of the worst case scenario. Ever since mankind could write, we've been predicting our own destruction. The zombies are down there, you can kind of play, pick them off. Some people's epiphany is when they realize that the guy that lives on their block with all the guns and ammo isn't crazy. Range is hot. Don't believe them? The zombie preppers have scientific backing. Doctor of Biomathematics at the University of Ottawa, Dr. Robert Smith, believes zombies are no longer science fiction and that they could soon be science fact. I think a zombie pandemic is something that might occur. This is something that's plausible. It's something that, at least in terms of spread, is very likely. We have a lot of human contact. This means that a disease that works through just direct human contact can actually spread remarkably efficiently. Zombies rising from the grave is just for the movies. But in reality, there are scientific theories for how zombies could exist. Dr. Steven Schlossman is assistant professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. The most likely etiology for a zombie pandemic would be some kind of mutated contagion most likely a virus. Not sure what's going on today. <laughs> Scientists theorize that a zombie pandemic would be as devastating and as deadly as any disaster movie. Everything really depends on how fast the zombie virus takes to transform its victims. It's almost certainly going to be very, very rapid, maximum 24 hours. That means once you have a single zombie infecting a city of, say, half a million people, in seven days, everybody will be dead or a zombie. Dr. Smith estimates that in eight to nine days, zombies would overwhelm a city the size of New York. May 26, 2012, the day the world discovered that zombies could be for real. The man is fighting for his life after he was reportedly attacked and his face half eaten by a naked man when police arrived on this truly bizarre scene they say they were forced to open fire on the alleged attacker an officer did discharge his weapons striking uh, one of the individuals on miami's macarthur causeway rudy eugene attacked 65 year old homeless man ronald popo naked and growling eugene chewed off chunks of popo's face before being shot to death by police Sources say a single bullet was not enough to stop the man from attacking the other's face. They say the cops had to fire several shots to finally stop that man. Previously known as good-natured, Eugene had no convictions for violence, was not a hard drug user. Yet he was shot to death while ripping the flesh off his victim's face. Professor Daniel Dresner of Tufts University, author of Theories of International Politics and Zombies, believes this is more than just another violent attack. Well, the news report suggested that someone in Miami seemed to be acting crazy, started eating the face off of another human being. We've got someone who seems to crave human flesh, and 
was not necessarily brought down immediately by gunshots. That sets off the zombie alarm bells. I think there's something that we're not entirely being told about the zombie attack, specifically the one in Miami. When a being turns and growls at somebody who's just shot them and goes back to eating, um, that's a red flag for me. And he didn't stop until he was shot in the head. After the Miami incident, outbreaks of flesh-eating attacks spiral. And suddenly, zombies are on everyone's radar, even Harvard scientists. In a very short space of time, there's been a number of very violent attacks. Investigators say 21-year-old college student Alexander Kinua killed his roommate, then ate his heart and parts of his brain. And the press referred to them as zombie-like attacks. That's because the behavior of these attacks reminded the reporters of the behavior that we understand to be zombie behavior. At least three cases of flesh-eating across the southern United States. Reports of frenzied cannibalistic attacks have now gone global. Could it be a mysterious plague spreading across the world from Miami to Canada, from Sweden to China? What the hell is that? The preppers see the attacks as an ominous sign of impending doom. They claim they know what's coming and are preparing for the apocalypse. Zombie prepper Matthew Oki is a firearms instructor and lives with his wife and two kids in Homestead, Florida. The angel went to her and said, Greetings. I do believe there is a ever-growing concern that something is on the horizon. Something is coming, something is building up. Well, I'm just loading up all the stuff that I need when I go to the range to go and practice. Well, self-protection's the culmination of everything we do. I would have no compunction whatsoever to do whatever is necessary to protect myself or my family. In a zombie apocalypse of the future, scientists predict the first attacks will be isolated. The true seriousness of the threat is not recognized. But as more and more fall victim, panic spreads. People try to leave the cities. Many don't make it out. <coughs> Patty Heffernan is committed to the prepper cause. She believes the biggest threat to her family is a zombie apocalypse. Look at the ball. Zombies absolutely terrify me. The thoughts that I have play in almost every part of my life, yeah. Um, it, it played into the house that I bought in making sure that, you know, I have a, I have a safe haven for my kids. Yeah, even my daughter knows that we only shoot zombies in the head. The moment someone gets bit, then we're to be infected. I guess for me, it would depend on who the person was. If my husband were to be infected, it would be really hard to deal with. But I know, you know, as long as I have my kids, I could still go on. I don't have words to express what they mean to me. Car. I certainly would hate to have to be the one to pull the trigger. Wherever it starts, it's going to spread very, very quickly. There is going to be probably an immediate government response, but it's not clear if that government response will be able to handle the sort of growing spread. <laughs> and before governments realize what's happening, zombies have gone global. The zombie will keep on coming unless you destroy the brain. The zombie preppers believe an apocalypse is imminent. And some scientists predict the zombie pathogen would spread like wildfire. Diseases can move very, very rapidly thanks to our global infrastructure, cars, trains, subways, all the movement that we're doing on an unprecedented human scale. When a zombie apocalypse happens, zombie preppers say they'll shoot their way out, battling through the infected. They predict those who aren't ready won't make it.
Prepper Sean Beatty from Wisconsin is a high school language teacher with a wife and two children. He plans to use his intellect to survive. He sees the Miami cannibal attack as a sign of a growing zombie threat. All of these cannibalistic attacks have been very zombie-like in nature and could be the start. When it hits the fan, my goal is to do things outside the box. Good day for shooting. Guns seem to be the popular choice for killing zombies, but it seems like it's counterproductive because you keep drawing more to you because you keep making noise. I would use a crossbow. Set those aside. All right. Scope your target. Aim for the head. Head is to the right if you would like to hit the brain. It's quiet. It's reusable. And if I miss, it won't let them know where I'm at. Also keeps me in check. I won't be overconfident when I know I have one shot. To control a future pandemic, scientists will need to understand zombie neurology. Dr. Steven Schlossman is a professor at Harvard Medical School. Zombie behavior is really characterized by three things. This pursuit, this locking in on a target. They pursue in order to feed, and in order to feed, they attack. <laughs> In a future pandemic, pathologists will examine victims, searching for a cause. Of a Caucasian male, about 140 pounds, no signs of trauma. Zombies cannot be destroyed unless you destroy the brain. You can hack off a limb, you can hack off a finger, anything else, the zombie will keep on coming. <laughs> Only by destroying the brain uh, does a zombie cease to exist. The key to understanding zombie behavior is to think about the zombie brain. In this case, a sheep's brain. The zombie brain has almost no activity in the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is what helps us to solve complex problems. It's called the executive functioning center. So it allows you to do two, three, four things at the same time. It also, importantly, allows you to distinguish between what's the right thing to do and the wrong thing to do. Some people might even say it helps you to distinguish good from evil. The cerebellum is the region of the brain that's responsible for balance. It's the region of the brain that gets undone when we drink too much. But in zombies, it never gets better. So we would have to say, from watching zombies ambulate, from watching the way they move, the way they stumble about, that this region of the brain, the cerebellum, is somehow not working right. So they attack for food. That's what they're after. They just want to satisfy that urge to eat. And there's no frontal lobe to think it through. That's how you get from a human brain to a zombie brain. Professor of political science at Tufts University, Daniel Dresner, has studied how the state and society would react to a zombie contagion. In the first stages of a zombie apocalypse, people are probably gonna first find out about this through Facebook, through Twitter, through YouTube. If human beings panic and society panics, that'll actually cause a much greater loss of life than just the zombies themselves. If a zombie pandemic occurred, the immediate period just after it would be awful. There would be a breakdown of infrastructure. We would have the very people who are supposed to help us themselves becoming sick, the doctors, the policemen, the fire officials, and chaos. One of the obvious ways that you would deal with a zombie apocalypse is to try to make sure that you've got enough resources so that you can stay in a hideout and not have to deal with anyone else until presumably the epidemic or the pandemic passes. During a zombie apocalypse, prepper Patty Heffernan plans to stay put with her family in her Wisconsin home. Food, clean water, some kind of way to defend yourself. Doing that 
would potentially make it easier for governments to stop a true zombie apocalypse. Because if people stay shuttered inside, they don't leave, then you're basically removing people that could then potentially become zombies. And hopefully you could then repel the zombies. Zombie preppers share knowledge and swap survival tips. Veteran prepper Sean Beatty visits Patty to learn how she's zombie-proofed her house. Hey, Patty. Hey, come on in. Patty has three rules of survival. One, don't stay on the ground floor. She believes that zombies are brain damaged, so they won't be able to climb stairs. These are my really steep stairs, which is somewhat of an advantage, because when you get to the top, it's high up. Two, find a good line of fire. Well, here's a balcony. Awesome. Out here. So, you know, from up here, this is a good, like, sniper position. The zombies are down there. You can kind of play, pick them off. It's another way out if I can't get out on my traditional routes. Do you have a ladder, or are you going to climb down the grades? I actually, I have a rope ladder, so I can take it with me. Oh, there you go. Yeah. All right. All right. Sounds like you have lots of stuff already kind of ready to go. Yes, I do. Patty's third rule, stock up your cupboards. Some people put their money away in savings account. Never spend it, just hang on to it, which is pointless to me. I stock up on food, because you cannot eat money. The reason that I do all this is so that my family can survive. I think it's very plausible that some government agency could be testing some kind of new drug. An impending zombie apocalypse, fact or fiction. Our cities, communities, and homes overrun by the walking dead. But what could cause the outbreak? An act of God? An accidentally released virus? Or government conspiracy? No one will rise from the graves. Realistically, it's going to be biological, viral, or a man-made chemical that will cause this pandemic, or be the start and Mother Nature will finish it off. Firearms instructor Matthew Oki lives with his family just an hour's drive from the site of the Miami zombie attack. He's determined to uncover the truth behind the flesh-eating nightmare. It seems like this would have been the perfect place to try it, something. And you know, all hysteria breaks loose and, and people panic. A week goes by and nobody even talks about it anymore. I think it's very plausible that some government agency uh, could be testing some kind of new drug. Could be testing, uh, you know, not necessarily a virus, but a drug. A crazed conspiracy theory? Not according to professor of political science, Daniel Dresner. One possible source of a zombie outbreak would be if the government had in fact developed a drug uh, that could in fact turn people from living human beings into zombies. The thing in Miami looks like one of those incidents that bubble up that the government didn't intend to become public. I believe a week after the Miami attack, um, the phrase zombie apocalypse started spiking on Google. And it got to be so bad that, in fact, the Centers for Disease Control had to issue a public statement saying, we are not aware of any zombie epidemic at this time. If it isn't an epidemic, then what is causing this wave of alleged cannibalistic attacks? There's a new hazardous drug with a harmless sounding name, bath salts. Police departments around this country are dealing with a surge of people abusing this synthetic drug with appalling consequences. <laughs> Police say he's under the influence of a cheap, easily attainable drug known on the streets as bath salts. <laughs> it's been suggested in the press that many of these attacks have been driven by the attackers ingesting bath salts. Now, what are bath salts? They're not the things you put in your bath to have a perfumey experience. They're a street term for a group of illicit substances of drugs that people take and create a sense of rage. <laughs> when you look at people who are high on bath salts, they seem to be disconnected from the kind of violence that they may be engaging in. They're bad, aren't they? Oh, they're a real bad thing. <laughs> but then it turns out that some of these attacks seem not to be associated with bath salts at all. So it leaves us wondering, what are other explanations for this behavior? Mm -hmm. 
the history of zombieism could provide an answer. The rites of voodoo and the related rituals of the Santeria of faith have been linked to zombification. My understanding is that a dark priest is asked to do something to somebody else by administering to them certain toxins that come from the puffer fish. That slows down the heart rate, slows down the breathing, so that others think that they're dead. Tetrodotoxin extracted from the puffer fish is 1,200 times more potent than cyanide and could be the key ingredient to a potential zombie chemical cocktail. In Miami, Matthew's investigations lead him to a Santoria priest. These powders, what they do is they don't kill the person. Once the zombie has been resurrected, that person is still alive. There's got to be a reason why you would do that to somebody. To enslave the person. You mean like mind control if they... Oh, you can do anything you want with a zombie. Make them do something that you want them to do. No kidding. You can do anything you want with a zombie. I'm getting the chills. Wow. At this moment, there are people outside of the Haitian community that are doing that just to see what it does. And they're trying it out with maybe one or two people and then seeing how viral it can get. Or there might be some kind of government involvement in this kind of stuff. In the United States? States? Some preppers suspect U.S. government tests on a voodoo-based zombie drug are behind the wave of cannibal attacks. But what do scientists think? There's a relatively disturbing history of governments using citizens or foreigners as guinea pigs. In the years 1953 to 1973, there was extensive testing of the psychoactive drug LSD by the CIA. Wow. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, wow. Hi. Many believe that a new secret government experiment could unleash the zombie virus on the population. To some, the governmental zombie drug theory is persuasive. We are at a local dam on the Fox River, and if anyone or Mother Nature is going to do something, the best way to get it out would be to infect the water supply. There's no one guarding this. It wouldn't be that hard to drive up some evening with a barrel or some sort of chemical or bacteria or virus and just drop right in. I'm surprised they haven't done it. It'd be the easiest way to affect the most people. They would infect the fish, which would in turn infect all the fishermen and all the animals that feed off the fish, not to mention anything that drinks from the water, which farmers uh, let their cows loose in the pastures, a stream running through the middle of their pasture, their, their pasture. The cows will get infected, infecting the milk, infecting the meat. So if you contaminate the water supply, you've affected the whole food chain, you've crippled the entire system of life. But it's not viable for a worldwide apocalyptic situation. You can't just have one or two people become zombies. You've got to have a large number become them. And the problem is, is that if you tried to dump some kind of drug into the water supply or into the food supply, you might be able to get a large number of people becoming zombies, but those people wouldn't be able to then create more zombies. And so inevitably, that way of creating zombies could eventually be contained. So the most likely etiology for a zombie pandemic would be a viral outbreak, a mutated contagion, most likely a virus. Viruses are fascinating organisms, and they would be very effective at changing us into something approaching the zombies. They mutate very quickly. They have very short lifespans. And most importantly, they use the host to reproduce. They use our DNA. They rely on us to spread themselves. So it fits right into the model of the zombie pandemic. You get the virus. You behave like a zombie, you attack somebody else, and spread that bug to the next person, and then to the next person, and so on, until you have pandemic proportions. Scientists and experts agree that the most likely and the most dangerous source of a zombie apocalypse is the emergence of a new disease. In recent decades, numerous new viruses have popped up. You have Ebola, you've got HIV, swine flu, avian. There's all kinds of different stuff out there. 
Are we just one accident, one twist of fate away from a viral catastrophe? Zombie virus would most likely begin in animals and make its way to humans. Widespread pandemic, you know, the end of days. Some scientists theorize a zombie virus could be virulent and deadly. But how would this new disease first infect the human population? Experts agree on the most likely source. All the recent diseases have come from some mutation from animals. Animals really are the place where diseases begin. The next zombie pandemic is very, very likely to come from an animal. So if we were to think about the circumstances that would be necessary to create a zombie pandemic, we would look for something like a large animal research facility being moved into a place where whatever organisms are being studied there would somehow be disrupted and let out into the public near a population center in an uncontrolled fashion. I'm on look at it. They could invade the food chain and become available to the general population. That's the kind of scenario that would create a zombie pandemic. Preppers and scientists believe just one small mistake could unleash the zombie apocalypse. If I think a zombie apocalypse is going to happen, it's not going to happen by intent. It's going to happen by accident. If we ignore the possibility that a mutated virus could turn into a plague, we will have an apocalyptic situation on our hands. Killer diseases, terrorism threats, and secret government research. Sounds like a blockbuster movie, but it's the storyline of a real place, a lab run by the Department of Homeland Security. And now it's about to clear its last hurdle before coming to Kansas. A new high security governmental bio research lab and animal testing center is relocating to the Midwest, and it's leading the local news. New concerns are surfacing about a national bio and agro defense lab planned for Manhattan, Kansas. Some say the government has underestimated the dangers. It's a trade-off. On the one hand, you obviously want to invest a fair amount of research in terms of combating new possibilities of pathogens or epidemics or bioterrorism. On the other hand, the more you invest in this stuff, the more you increase the likelihood that there will be some kind of accident that could then without anyone expecting it, lead to the spread of some kind of epidemic in the United States. I have major questions about why, they, why the government decided to uh, build that type of facility and why they decided to build it there. Matthew is not the only one to feel threatened by the proposed bio-research lab. Alfredo Carvajal is founder and leader of the Kansas Anti-Zombie Militia. I live about five minutes away from where the proposed facility is. There is a high possibility of having some kind of zombie outbreak with a bio lab that's being moved in here. We formed together to be a preparation group. We are a group of individuals with different skills, some of us ex-military, police officers, people train in firefighting, paramedics. Home is supposed to be where you feel safe at. I no longer feel safe knowing that something like this is coming near me. A zombie virus basically spreads by a bite. An infected zombie bites a susceptible human, transforming that human into a zombie. <laughs> it's quite terrifying. There's no reason why we should think that a virus that turns us into flesh-eating monsters is unrealistic. Pandemic, you know, the end of days. Matthew has traveled from Florida to meet with Kansas-based prepper Alfredo to share concerns about the proposed new bio-research facility. Alfredo, how are you, sir? Matthew, nice to meet you. Oh. How you doing, sir? Doing pretty good. What do you got for me? Give me some information. I know they're bringing in some uh, pretty bad uh, viruses, diseases to study on. Well, what would happen if, if 
an animal gets loose from this facility. It could be like a rat. Of course, us being farmland, it could get into some of the grains and... Get into feedstock. Get into the feedstock and it'll pass to animals or even the people that eat the produce. And when you look at the location, just for the United States, it's literally smack dab in the middle of the United States. The heartlands. The heartlands, yeah. Kansas, meant to be the middle of nowhere. But of course, if you think about Kansas, Kansas was actually where the 1918 Spanish influenza outbreak started. It started in army barracks in Kansas. It was only called Spanish influenza because Spain was reporting it because of media blackouts in the First World War. The pandemic went on to spread disease and death around the world. Major pandemics have about a 90-year cycle. The Spanish influenza outbreak of 1918 killed 100 million people. That was an enormous proportion of the world at the time. We have many more people, of course, now. If it kills about the same proportion, we're in big, big trouble. I know they're bringing pretty much everything that they've been working on at the Plum Island facility. They're bringing them all into the mainland, and that's what the main concern is, yeah. you know, especially being in a, being, uh, Kansas, it's in the middle of Tornado Alley. Bringing a facility like that, it just seems crazy. If you look at the facts, there has been eight presidential declared natural disasters in this area alone. Matthew and Alfredo visit the site of the facility. So how did you find out about this facility? Actually, one of, the, uh, one of our fans from the website posted up a link and that's how I found out that this was actually a uh, relocation to the Plum Island facility. Wow. You know, so I didn't even know. I thought it was just, a, you know, another K-State research right, center. Right. And it turns out it's bigger than that. And it's owned by the Homeland Security. Mm. So it's, um, it was a shocker to me. There's a sign in Bath right there. National Bio and Agro Defense Facility. Yep. Authorized personnel use only. This is it, huh? Yep. And see, there's cameras on the telephone poles. Yep. Look, you got cattle right here. Is that part of the college? Yes. That's uh, part of the uh, agricultural department. The proposed National Bio and Agro Defense Facility in Manhattan, Kansas, will study a range of infectious diseases. Matthew and Alfredo are concerned about its proximity to the local community. We got a um, retirement community to the east of here. The feed distribution center right here. Livestock to right the there. north. Stadium. Stadium. Hospital. Uh, Which past the hospital? Uh, there's an elementary school there. And wow. actually inside a residential area. We need to inform the people that this is an actual danger. This is not just you know, something you see in movies or you read about. This is actual, this can be a reality. The critical question is how quickly scientists can figure out how the zombie pandemic was spreading. They've got to figure that out quickly, otherwise it'll be too late. A zombie apocalypse happening is not a question of if, it's a question of when. A zombie apocalypse would change everything. You have to do what you have to do. talk to you. What do you do when the zombies come? Oh, I'm going to go into this big store. I'm going to grab all the food and get all the drinks. And, and that is what everyone else is thinking. Of. I'm going to avoid those places and find others that have the same resources, but aren't the first thing to come to mind. No one's going to come here. No one thinks of going out for cat food in an emergency. They want to go to the supermarket and get snacks and bottled water. Um, as you can see, there's tons of cat food on both sides of the aisles. It might not taste great, but it'll do the trick. Because the idea is survival, not comfort. Why wouldn't you come here? In the event of a zombie viral outbreak, some scientists theorize that the infected would transform from regular people into ravenous, violent killers. To start with, these new zombies are vulnerable thinking about the zombie brain, and we're thinking that something has changed that brain so that what used to be 
seeming more human, now stumbles around, can't walk well, doesn't move well. At this point, an outbreak can be contained. But for how long? Every human being is a laboratory. The virus is changing and mutating inside every single one of us. That means we're all producing different strains of the virus. If we were going to imagine the evolution of the zombie brain, it would become increasingly sophisticated. When that zombie brain evolves, the zombie gets certain attributes that it didn't have before. That zombie can go up the stairs. That zombie can turn the doorknob. They can plan coordinated attacks. If that zombie brain evolved, we'd be in trouble. If zombies evolved, some scientists predict the contagion would be unstoppable and panic would sweep through the nation. If governments don't stop people from panicking, then you're going to have social disorder no matter what happens with respect to the zombies. Once basic services start going away, like once the power goes off or the internet crashes or cell towers go down, then they start realizing it's real. Then they become more desperate. If you believe that governments and emergency authorities can subdue a zombie uprising in, let's say, one week or two weeks, then things like stockpiling and you know, defending yourself make a great deal of sense and fortifying wherever your position is. If, however, you don't have faith that the government is going to be able to do these things, then you've got to start drawing up a much longer term plan. That's exactly what Alfredo and his Kansas anti-zombie militia have done. Preparation for the worst is needed. Nothing's more worst case scenario than a zombie pandemic. They are preparing for war, a war against the walking dead. In a secret location, the militia prepare for what they believe will be a fight for the survival of the human race. Here we are, guys. It's our stockpile. This is the beginning of the worst case scenario. We have weapons for any kind of situation, long range combat, short range combat. We have fuel. A battery can be recharged. Propane, it's going to be scarce. Water. We're constantly trying to figure out ways to find other water. This is a filtration straw where you can dip this in anything and take some clean water out of it. We want to make sure we have plenty of non-perishable foods, canned goods, freeze-dried foods. And we've got a high stock of MREs as well. So we've got some you know, military meals ready to go. And when this is built, um, the most important equipment that we have available is personal protective equipment. We want to make sure everyone stays healthy and there is no spread of infection. Yeah, we're just trying out our hazmat suits, guys. The Kansas anti-zombie militia practiced their response to the release of an airborne zombie virus. These uh, hazmat gear, they can stop uh, the pathogen from actually being exposed to your body. I'm gonna try and get this done in under a minute. Let's go. Right. You got monsters coming after you. You wanna get these on as fast as you can. Is that correct? You get moves. Alright. You'd be getting eaten by now. Sure. Alright, you guys are at about two minutes right now. We'll work on that a little later. Get your chance up to speak. Granted, it's a it's a little uncomfortable. It's it's hot, but at the same time you're thinking you're you're risking comfort for health. You look like survivors. Rifle practice involves using pumpkins for zombies. But Matthew wants to know how Alfredo's militia will cope when it comes to shooting a real target. What if it comes down to it's only you and your loved ones and you find out one of your loved ones is all of a sudden contracted this some That would be the worst thing that could possibly happen is have a loved one infected. Um, there, there is no choice. You, you have to do what you have to do.
can't go around just shooting every zombie that we see. We have to try to cure the zombie bug. We can't fight primitive with primitive. We would have to use our higher intelligence. Science does a couple of things for us when we're thinking about zombies. It helps us to understand the behavior of zombies, but it also gets us closer to how we would cure somebody of zombieism. Everything is measurable. If we study it carefully, we can know how the disease works, how fast it goes, what are the chances of mutation, and so on. Then we can try and measure this, understand, predict, control. Think about past epidemics like H1N1 or the SARS epidemic. Generally speaking, governments were able to respond relatively quickly in terms of what people should do to avoid getting it and identifying the virus and finding ways to combat it. You would hope that governments would be just as nimble with respect to zombies. In theory, we can stop a zombie outbreak, but in practice, we probably can't. It's very, very difficult to stop diseases, no matter how quickly we act. Unlike zombies, human beings are incredibly adaptable, and that's our best weapon against them. Human beings have survived wars, religious persecution, pandemics. They should be able to survive a zombie apocalypse. It will bring us to the brink of extinction, but I don't think we'll actually be extinct. I think humans are so strong, they're so adaptable, that we will go on. <laughs> advice I would give to people during a zombie apocalypse is overall be prepared. You have to have a, a mental preparedness as much as a physical preparedness. Range is hot! There's no doubt in my mind it will happen. It's a matter of when. The scientists say it's possible. The preppers say it's coming. They're ready. Are you?